Hey guys, this is Titan and I welcome you to the 33rd episode of my City Skyline series Wederstein. Now there has been a break uh, in the last week and that was just due to the fact that um, well sometimes I just need more time for making these episodes than I uh, than I have basically and well that happens. In fact I actually had to cut like half of the work I did in this episode I had to cut out of the episode because otherwise I'd have another 40 minute episodes. So what you see today is um, what was my idea of creating a monastery for Wederstein or to be more precise a monastery that um, lies on the river banks a bit yeah I don't know maybe one or two kilometers away from Wederstein itself so it's it doesn't really have a connection to the city itself and um, but what I also did in this episode was a bit more of riverside detailing with um, some train tracks and some houses but I cut all of that out of this episode because the monastery itself took so much time that I didn't think it, it was really necessary to let or to have all of all of the progress in this episode and after all in the last episode I already explained showed um, to you how I made these uh, river sites and the train tracks and the embankment and, and everything so I thought it's fine if for this video I'm only concentrating on the monastery which I think based on the fact that um, it's well the, the, the design of this monastery is completely based on buildings that actually have nothing to do with the monastery um, I think it's it's interesting to yeah to focus to really focus on on how I achieved that look now the whole design the whole um, layout of this monastery is based on a monastery in Switzerland which is called um, Kloster Einsiedeln. Um, it's on the Lake Zurich or the Zurich Lake and yeah I thought this is sort of a pattern that um, would would look yeah would look very nice and interesting um, also here on this map and I think in the end I definitely succeeded in that um, in following that idea of having that monastery um, nestled in the yeah in the valley formed by the river and next to the river and on basically only surrounded by fields and landscape so that a bit of an idealized version of a monastery that is yeah in a in a bit serene peaceful setting that was um, my approach here and I think that yeah it turned out believable and I I, I personally am I'm, I'm very satisfied with how it turned out and you already saw I yeah I did a lot of PO work um, thus far with um, the first thing I did was completely changing the roof colors of all of these buildings and that was just due to the fact that I well in this region for the most part I have red roofed colors uh, no, red colored roofs and so I thought I should try the same on this monastery and how I did this was I'm doing it um, the same way here with these towers is just using some color rectangles that you can do with MPO and gave them an opacity of like 13% to 20% to sort of um, overlay the former black roofs of these buildings and so that yeah they so that the roofs turn red but still keep their um, yeah, their, their texture so to say and yeah I, I think that was a an interesting idea and a, if I may say so to myself a good idea because um, it certainly gives a much more unique feeling and I also have a feeling that I will use this technique much more often in the future now that I know that this definitely works very very well. 
And to explain what um, buildings I'm using here, I think um, yeah, you technically could know all of these buildings by now. Um, um, I am using the market church from Paderborn. I from Paderborn, I made. I already used that church on the market square in Wederstein itself. Now I used it again because I thought it would fit. Yeah, it would fit this um, Baroque monastery building very well. And the rest of the buildings belonging to the monastery are almost only. Um, from my modular Eisenach City Palace set that I also uploaded to the workshop. Which, um, yeah, they, I think they certainly make a good um, monastery complex here. And then just some towers um, here and there, uh, or these um, walls made by Raccoon and Peter Bar here. And yeah, I think with that, I sort of got a realistic um, monastery setting. So now that this is basically settled, um, I'd like to talk a bit about the general idea of this monastery because I think you know that with me it's always that I need to have a sort of history behind the building and it sort of has to feel um, naturally or it, yeah I don't know, it has to feel authentic in the city or in the, in the general region and uh, so this monastery actually is sort of a, I suppose, a weak spot in that, um, in that, in that, yeah, I don't know, thing I have that I always have to do it as sort of realistic, because Wederstein lies in, yeah, in Saxony, in Germany, more, almost east, eastern Saxony, which is a region that after the Reformation was definitely very Protestant and. Uh, yeah, I think there was almost no Catho uh, Catholicism, I think, left in this region. And so having this huge Baroque monastery is like, it doesn't make quite a lot of sense. But um, on the other side, there are still two monasteries left in Saxony that are um, Catholic and that are Baroque monasteries. And so I more or less just followed um, the pattern of that one. I, I don't really have an, a history for the monastery we're having here now, um, but I'm sure I'll come up with a reasonable solution to explain the, yeah, the, just the, ex the existence of that one here. And aside from that, I, yeah, I thought about a name for the monastery and in the end I named it um, a Benedictine monastery, so um, a monastery following the Benedictine um, order or ruled by or, or ha inhabited by uh, Benedictine mon monks, 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 you know what I mean? And, and yeah, named after the Holy Cross. So. The monastery we're having here is the Benedictine Monastery of the Holy Cross um, in yeah, the Veda Valley, which I am satisfied with. What we're doing now is um, 
it are like some economic buildings because the monastery doesn't run by itself or probably didn't run by itself but rather um, you had the monastery and then there usually are also some um, sort of economic buildings around the monastery. Usually it was like that the monks only lived in the monastery and most of them never left the monastery and actually most of them didn't even have a yeah, contact with the outside world meaning like um, they never spoke to people from the outside world or they never traveled of course um, that's not um, the rule for all monks in monasteries but I think the um, please write me if I'm wrong here um, but as far as I know the, the broad majority of monks never left the monastery of course still there were those that left the monastery because um, usually monasteries also yeah more or less ruled over in cer over a certain area so if monasteries were on the countryside they often also had some villages um, that they ruled over and so therefore monks of course or some monks uh, of course had to leave the monastery and uh, yeah get in contact with the people in these villages of course and so that's then what these economic buildings um, are for aside from that I'm making I'm having this um, square in front of the monastery here there is this uh, statue in the middle with probably the Virgin Mary I suppose um, I should mention that I'm not that big of a, um, yeah, I, I'm not that um, big, uh, or well, I don't know that much about like um, Catholic or tr uh, religious tradition um, in general, and I myself am neither Catholic nor nor Protestant nor anything. So um, all I'm doing here in terms of Christianity is like what I know from reading about it or watching documentations or whatever it's nothing like um, from experience so could be that I'm doing a lot of things wrong here or explaining them wrong but at least I don't hope so and then um, like the general yeah idea of this monastery for modern day would be that um, or as a matter of fact I could more or less copy the idea of an, another monastery in Saxony, a in fact monastery that is still um, lived in by nuns and that is that like these nuns still live in the monastery and they work in the monastery but um, what back in the days were like maybe 50 or even 100 nuns are today like 10. So it's a more or less really small group of people that still live in this monastery and they for themselves of course don't need this huge um, area and so nowadays there would be maybe um, a monastery museum the nuns offer um, tours guided tours through the monastery um, there are probably some guest rooms you can rent there is a cafe you can visit the gardens and so it's it became a tourist um, site in itself rather than just a religious site and this is something I um, yeah I, I'm I'm doing here as well but like here I'm having a cafe and in a few se seconds you'll see me uh, putting down a small um, flower shop and so that this um, Benedictine monastery is like still inhabited by monks to this day but what was like, I don't know, let me guess, 100, 150 monks back in the days are just 12 today or maybe 10 or 15, it doesn't really matter. And to still sustain themselves, cause like, um, of course, such a huge area is very expensive to maintain. Um, they um, rent rooms and have a cafe and everything and are probably also um, funded by the state um, because of their um, yeah their the heritage this um, this building and this um, whole um, complex in itself um, uh, yeah, is to um, the 
this this um, cultural heritage this monastery in itself uh, is. And so in that sense, I'm I made this um, parking or these parking grounds here in front of the monastery and even for um, bus parking spaces for tourist groups or um, anything that um, might visit this monastery to um, really show that what was a holy site back in the days is now more or less a tourist site which I think is yeah which I definitely not think is a bad thing because um, these monasteries usually have a or have a have a big importance in terms of um, history and arts that I think would just feel wrong to um, only keep for themselves. So um, having this open for tourists also is like um, a good thing in terms of that um, the the amount of arts and everything is like shown to the public, which is um, which should be just as it is for modern castles or castles in modern days. Alright, now that the parking spaces in front of the monastery are done and uh, well at least the general layout of the monastery is done I again did a bit of like, just road and landscape detailing with these um, road signs here and that is something that I would really like to pay more attention to in <laughs> let's say the future um, or at least the future of this series because um, yeah, I think adding road signs everywhere just makes it look so much more um, interesting and realistic. So that's probably something you will see more in the future, especially now that I can just um, PO every road sign so it doesn't count to the prop limit. Um, I probably will do that a lot more. All right then. Off to the last bit of this episode, which is the uh, monastery gardens. Back in the days, of course, these monastery gardens were only used by the monks to sustain themselves uh, and to grow some um, herbs. Nowadays, the um, gardens are open to the public and, well, probably the plants that grow there are used um, still by the monks, but also um, so, uh, being sold in 
um, the um, adjacent monastery souvenir shop or just a herbal shop or whatever and as with the whole layout of the monastery that is based on the monastery Einsiedeln in, in Switzerland as I already mentioned this um, garden also is completely based on that monastery and you'll see that in just a few minutes that what I did was um, yeah, separating this area in the back of the monastery or in the, in, in the, in the backyard even of this monastery and putting some field decals down because and I'm getting a bit ahead of myself here uh, yeah now I'm separating the area and once that area is separate also um, what I should mention is that it's really great to have these um, or to, have, to finally have some decent looking um, uh, yeah, dirt paths um, in the game so a huge thanks to Mac Welshman he might not see that but nevertheless they look so great now what I actually wanted to say is that um, to realize these um, herbal fields or these um, yeah, these, these herb fields that uh, many monasteries had or still have I used some farm decals and due to procedural objects it's, it's just so easy to um, scale them in size and use them for every possible um, use there could be. I think it would even be possible to use these, um, these otherwise huge farm decals to, um, to, to make some backyard detailing in in um, residential areas as you know I have a habit of doing and I think even that would be possible to have like some um, yeah some some fields in in personal private gardens but for now I'm using it here um, for the monastery and uh, yeah just making all these um, all that countryside related stuff in the past or these um, past few episodes really um, it's, it, it's just so interesting to do and such a nice um, change compared to what I did all the episodes before with um, creating the city and it's, it's just too nice to also do a bit of countryside uh, detailing that I always um, had struggle doing because I I haven't been able to achieve a realistic look and I think with quite a lot of trial and error actually um, I was able to make that um, in a yeah, somewhat realistic way. And just to add a bit of, yeah, to just to add the third or to, to, to bring the third dimension here into this um, monastery garden I'm adding at least a few plants on these um, on these uh, uh, field decals on these farm decals just to make it look a bit three-dimensional and not purely like painted on the ground with all that being said however um, I'd like to bring this episode to an end already so it was um, a bit of a shorter episode but I think that's only okay because like the, the last episodes were almost too long in itself based on the content we uh, we had there which is, was basically just fields or, or trees so yes I want to thank you for watching if you're new to my channel um, feel free to hit the subscribe button in case you like what I'm doing here to get notified um, whenever I upload something new and of course I will do so. Feel free to also jump on, on my Discord server, the link is in the description to get in touch with me or others who follow my work. There are already some great people there and we have some nice talks. And if, you, if you'd like to join, feel free to do so, you are always welcome. If you really want to support me, uh, you can do so on Patreon. And of course, as always, and I can't say it often enough, such a huge thanks to the people who already support me on Patreon. You guys are amazing and I can't thank you enough for your support. 
that's it from my side for now. Um, I'll leave you with the cinematics in just a few seconds. So um, have fun with those. See you in the next episodes. Until then, stay safe, stay tuned, stay healthy. Um, see you then. Bye.